r slash no sleep posted by you slash in Lotharn. I saw a little girl hiding in the forest helping her was a horrible mistake hi I'm not very good with computers and sometimes it's even hard to express myself at my age but I will do my best to warn you please read into my story as it can potentially save you someday my name is Theodore Richwell I am 72 years young and a widower Mrs. Richwell went to a better place last autumn leaving a gasping hole of grief in my heart. We lived in a nice old house on the outskirts of the city, enjoying every moment of our retirement, we went for long walks, visited theater and cinema when they had some retro showings and not only, I can say that we both liked those latest Marvel movies. That summer we even rented a boat and spent some time on the water. Life was good. And suddenly it all interrupted. But this is not a confession of some old geezer, just give me some time to find the words. After the burial and taking care of all the bills and papers I sat down in my living room and went deep in my thoughts, now, as I am all on my own the house is just too big for me alone. Besides, I was not sure that living here all by myself would be the smartest financial choice. Plus, all the little things that filled the rooms, her smell and drapes and sheets and sofa cushions, at the time it was unbearable. Long story short, I took care of it and decided to move back to my hometown. I used to be a country boy back in the day and lived in a small rural village that was located about 300 kilometers away from my current home. My dad's house was still standing proud out there, neighboring the vast forests, close to a lake and twice as old as I am. But it was mine and I really took care of it through all these years. Beth and I used to take summer trips there, so it was a bit dusty, yes, but painted recently and quite inhabitable. Way back in the century, when my gramps was still around there were stables and fields. It was a family farm located a bit on the side of the town, but as time flew by and it became cheaper and simpler to buy things rather than grow and raise them, it all went to oblivion and right now the fields were covered with regular grass and weeds rather than beets and tomatoes. Forest crawled closer each year and now you could see it sedge straight out my kitchen window. Anyway, sorry I'm getting a bit sidetracked over here with those sweet memories. Word is, I moved in. And next deed of mine was to get a dog and so I did. I tamed a pooch who was hanging around the only mini-mart in town, waiting for some treats from the locals. I named him Chap and suggested him to follow me. So he did. Chap appeared to be quite an affectionate and smart pup, so that's how my life started to look like, an old man and his dog, helping each other to feel a little less lonely. I also met some old faces around the town, some old pals whom I used to play with when I was younger, some ladies that made my heart beat faster before I met the love of my life. But to tell the truth, most of acquaintances either moved or passed away. That autumn was quite windy with long heavy rains that made the dirt roads into a horrible porridge of rotten leaves, mud and stones. Good thing I had not that much business outside these days. Chap could go out by himself, though he looked a bit offended that he didn't get a company, and I could sit in front of the fireplace, reading a good book or simply shuffling good memories watching the dancing flames. But one day in November, as the sun, unseen behind the stormy clouds, supposed to be setting according to the clock I've heard a strange dripping sound in the hall. I've got a leak in my roof. Outrageous. With this thought I went to bed making sure to put some pot underneath the soak. First thing in the morning, I made sure that the rain was no more and went to a hardware store to get some materials and tools. Hour and a half later I was setting up the ladder with my tool belt on. Yes, I might be an old man, but I refuse to lay my hands down. Especially when it comes to a simple roof leak that could be fixed with a tarp and couple of planks. Chap was running in circles around the house barking at me enthusiastically, as if supporting my working spirit. Long story short, I don't know what was the cause, probably the soil that was still wet from all the rain, or probably I don't sense my weight all that good anymore. I felt down. I mean, the ladder did, but I was on it, so. Red flowers bloomed in front of the black before my eyes as I've landed on my hip. I laid a bit before attempting any further movement. The dog was all over me licking my face and whining as if it could help. I attempted to stand up but my body got stinched with electrical impulse of a crippling force, I couldn't. Luckily the cell phone was in my shirt pocket and I didn't land on it. I called the ambulance. Cutting to a point, I got myself a bad crack in my hip, which doctor assured happens quite often to people of my age, due to deficit of. But wait, that's not it. Important thing is, I've spent couple of weeks at the hospital and was released when the first snow hit the ground. All the time while I was laying my bones at hospital mattress, July, the kind young lady was taking care of chap for me twice a day. And when I came back she was officially assigned as my caring nurse. She visited us several times a day, brought food and helped with everyday chores. So my hip was healing quite good, 
I can walk around the house with the help of two crutches and duo of chap and July brightened my days. By the middle of December I was, I would say, half as good as new. The puffy snow covered the trees outside beautifully, Christmas was coming and it grew darker earlier in the day. One evening I was sitting in my armchair watching the TV with the furry rascal by my feet as usual. Suddenly something as if pinched me in the back of my head. As if somebody was watching me. I've turned around still sitting down and peered over the shoulder into to a window behind me. Just the gloomy dark silhouettes of the trees and a white carpet beneath. Relax, dead. It's just your imagination and probably side effects of your medication, I said to myself as I was about to turn my head back towards the screen. But suddenly, at the very brink of my sight something unusual flashed for half a second or less. I rubbed the nose bridge with fingers with eyes closed and gave it a second try. Yes, definitely there was something out there but my vision deceived me. So I've grabbed the glasses lying on the coffee table in front of me, leaned on the crutch and went for the window to get a better look. As I stared into dark thicket behind my house I definitely felt another presence and so did Chap, who raised his head and looked wondered as he listened. And then I saw her, the girl. It was a small girl, probably 7 to 10 years old. She was wearing only pink pajamas, standing barefooted behind one of the trees. She was half hidden behind a huge pine tree with one of her arms leaning on the tree trunk before her. I saw the curls of the hair and the single eye staring at me. Well, I think she was staring at me, as she was standing pretty far from my window and my vision used to be much better. I was surprised. I was shocked. And then I suddenly realized that she might need help. Jesus Almighty, she had no coat or shoes. She could potentially freeze to death out there. If it wasn't my leg, I swear I would rush to help. But I could barely move on flat surfaces, not even hoping to cross the backyard towards the woods with all those roots and snow lying around. So I did the next smart thing that came to my mind, I've called the cops. I've tried to be calm, but pretty sure that it was very expressive. The life of a little girl was at brink of life and death after all. I was holding the phone next to my face while still staring at the girl as I've noticed that she raised her hand and waved at me. But at that point I got distracted with officer asking some question and I dropped the sight. When I looked back she was not waving anymore. Ten minutes later I heard a knock at the door and judging by red and blue lights reflecting in the windows, the cavalry was here. Chap exploded with barking, but I calmed him down quickly. It was officer Rick Candle, the son of Mitch Candle, my good old friend and former classmate. Hello, Mr. Richwell. Nice to see you. Where is the girl you've mentioned? He asked politely. Hi Rick. Good that you came so fast. She's over there, right behind that. I paused, as no one was there behind the tree. I think you might have scared her. She was just out there at the edge of the forest. Rick unfastened the flashlight from his belt. Please, stay here Mr. Richwell, I'm going to check out the area. And he went out talking over his shoulder radio. Twenty minutes later he came back. No one was there. No traces in the snow at all. We spent some time with him asking me questions about the girl, how did she look like, what clothes did she had on and stuff like that. I felt weird. At one point I was absolutely sure that I saw what I saw, but I know how Rick must have felt, an old man who is two steps away from a nursing home sees some weird stuff after taking his painkillers. He never said anything like that, but I would in his place. Should I say that was not his last visit? Through next 15 days he parked his service car at my door four more times. As yes, I saw the same girl. Same pink pajamas and bare feet. Yays, I agree. At that point it became surreal even to think about, if it wasn't my mind and the whole situation was real, how did she not freeze to death? What did she eat in that forest? Thousand of questions swarmed in my head. Last time, before Rick came by, Chap lost it and ran to the forest barking. I saw him running to the forest edge through the same window. My brave friend vocalized through the silence of the night as he shortened the distance towards the tree where the girl was standing, waving at me again. Suddenly he stopped, tucked his tail turned around and started to escape the scene. He came back trembling and whining. Rick, didn't find anything. He was nice enough to check all the recent missing cases in the area but none were registered. He even contacted the regions, nothing. It all unfolded as New Year's Eve came by. It was getting dark and I was getting ready for the last feast of the year as suddenly I heard a soft knock at my door. Chap was calm and just raised his head as if to check out who it was. The door opened in July, my guardian angel entered the hall holding a big glass container before her. Mr. Richwell. Dead. I was unable not to pass by and make sure that you would have something nice for dinner today, so here's some home-cooked lasagna by my secret family recipe, she said. Oh, 
Thank you dear. That's really sweet of you. I didn't expect guests, so this is such a pleasant surprise, I've replied, may I seduce you to stay for a cup of tea or chardonnay, if you will? Oh, you. Yes, a good cup of tea would be perfect, it's freezing outside. Minutes later we were chatting with our steaming drinks in our hands. To a point, where I pay out my loan, and then probably I will go for higher qualification, but that's not happening anytime soon. Jesus Christ. Are you seeing that? She exclaimed. I've followed her stare but somewhere deep down I already knew what she was talking about. Yes. You are seeing her too? I almost believed that my dementia is kicking in. I've called Rick many times, but he couldn't, I've started my explanation. Hey, Melinda? Please tell Rick to come to Mr. Rich Wells. Yes, I know. This is urgent. There's a little girl alone in the woods. Dead will add more details, she tucked her cell into my hand as she rushed out into the woods with her jacket as if it was the fire blanket. I watched silently. There she was running towards the tree. There's the girl who moves away and hides behind the trunk. There's July going around and disappearing from my sight. And then there's the scream that chills every weak bone in my crumbling body. It's almost unbearable to listen, so I pull the palms of my hands towards my ears. This cannot be happening. Five minutes later Rich is here. He has Melinda, the only officer on duty this night with him. After a brief exchange of words and me pointing at the tree where July disappeared they rush towards the thicket, their boots drowning in deep snow, their guns at their hands. Oh, July. My angel. I can't just stand here. My hip is not that bad anymore. I grab the crutch, pull on my shoes and hobble to the forest. Couple of times I stumble and almost fall face down into the freezing white beneath my feet. Champ circles around as if supporting my sudden impulse. Finally I make it to the tree. It's silent, I don't hear Rick and Melinda talking between themselves or over the radio. Groaning and trying to catch the breath I lean towards the trunk and come around. I've seen a lot of horrible things in my life, there were tough times, there were wars. I saw sorts of cruelty and mischief, but this was something unbearable. The officers weren't talking as one of them was bent over vomiting and the other, as white as snow under the feet was left speechless with palm of the hand over the mouth and the eyes full with terror. Beneath the feet a little body was lying in her pink pajamas face down. And I thank God I didn't get a good look of the horror her face must have expressed. What will haunt me for the rest of the short life I am left are the holes. There were three holes as if punched into her tender little body, the head, the shoulder blade and the area just beneath the rib cage gazed with deep black round holes as frozen circles of blood framed them. As if something put in the limbs through them to make the body look alive, just like a ventriloquist doll. I closed my eyes and tears bursted out. July was never found. There were no traces, no footprints on the snow. The girl was never identified. She was not from around here. I know that after this incident Melinda quit her job. I'm still living at my place, I am too old to be scared for myself. Chap is still here to support me and my hip healed completely. If it wasn't my injury, I would probably never pass this knowledge. Oh, and one more thing, I think this thing appears only in winter. My theory is that the cold helps to preserve the bait bodies from decay. At least I haven't seen it through the year. Up to this January. This time it's a blonde boy, 